Hey dudes, Junkyard Dave here. Um, I want to talk to you about Buck Your Hair, specifically hard mode percent. So what is hard mode? If at the beginning of the screen you enter in hard as a password with an exclamation mark, it actually enables an anti-piracy feature. So way back in the olden days when there was copiers and stuff like that, if you copied the game wrong, it would trigger an anti-piracy flag where everything kills you in a single hit. In the original Bucky O'Hare, or I guess the whatever, non-anti-piracy mode, you actually have an extremely gratuitous health bar. You can take like 100 hits. Uh, I mean that's slightly exaggerated, but the whole point is you can take hit after hit after hit. Whereas in hard mode, everything kills you in a hit. Um, with the exception of I think like, these like brain slugs that suck your head. So why on earth would you want to play hard mode? And I think the answer is almost no RNG. So out of all the screens in Bucky O'Hare, there's actually two that only have RNG in them. So the first one is a lovely, 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 lovely auto-scroller. It's about 50 seconds long, it's in the blue planet, and you'll probably die there a lot if you learn this run. But it is a 50 second auto-scroller where toads spawn low, medium, and high, and their shots, they're not necessarily random, they're kind of on a timer, um, but you basically have to like avoid and evade and dodge and strategically shoot and make sure that you're in position for about 50 seconds. So initially it's probably one of the harder screens to learn in the game. Um, it does become pretty consistent, but it, it really is as lovely as it sounds. Um, everybody loves auto-scrollers and everybody really, really loves RNG auto-scrollers. And the second screen of RNG is these things that fall on your head in Magma. And there's like no conceivable way, they just drop on your head whenever they feel like it, and it's way less consistent than the auto-scroller in Blue Planet. And they suck. They will kill you probably many times, and they suck. Otherwise, it's a beautiful speed game. Um, it sounds good, it looks good, it controls good, it controls flawlessly, actually. And the basic premise of the game is to go around on the various planets and collect the lost party members that have been kidnapped. So you start off with Bucky, and he has kind of like a lateral shot that shoots left and right. Um, you can obviously jump and arc it and aim it, but it, it never really changes laterally. And he has a power jump that he can jump quite high in the air, and every single character in this game, uh, if they collect like a power-up token, they can power up their ability, and they don't share the same power-up bar. They actually have individual power bars, but you do share life uh, bar. You're later joined by Blinky, a little tiny robot that has kind of like a lobbing arc shot. And that's actually extremely useful in the speedrun, but unfortunately his ability, this little rocket jump thing that he has, uh, is not. Jenny is easily one of the best characters in the entire game. You probably won't use her actually during the stages themselves, but she has easily the best ability in the entire game. It's like this little ball of energy and it's kind of hard to control, but I'm pretty sure it does like one damage per frame, and on top of that too, it basically instant kills like every single boss. So she becomes absolutely indispensable and absolutely the most valuable character I think in the entire, in the entire run. Deadeye I find to be like the best character design. I, I think he looks really cool, but unfortunately he's not entirely useful in the run. His ability is kind of like this suction thing where he can walk and cling on walls, and the higher the power bar, the longer he can do that. And he also has a try shot that shoots in three different directions, um, one horizontal going up and down, and then one lateral. So he sounds like he's full of utility, but you'll probably not use him as much as you think you will. And the last dude is Wooly. Um, he is useless. <laughs> Yeah, in the speedrun itself, he has actually a, a cool property with his weapon, that he can shoot through most things. Some things in the game take like two shots to kill. Um, if he shoots through them, it takes one shot. And he has a powered up version of that shot that does even more damage, but you never use it in the speedrun. And even furthermore, uh, he's only had like maybe three or four screens he's actually really useful on. Uh, as you cycle through the characters and you use everybody to the best of their ability, you'll definitely realize that Willy is like the most useless sack of shit ever. So I guess the question is, why speedrun hard percent buck your hair? And I think everything comes together. It's this beautiful combination, kind of like chocolate or mint, or pineapple and pizza. I don't care what any Italian thinks about that. Um, you have instant kill, but it's offset by skillful gameplay, and it's rewarding when you can go through with perfect execution and technical skill. You have just the right amount of pixel perfect, or like near pixel perfect things, or difficult tricks or techniques. Um, that require a very high threshold of skill. You have interesting tech like death warps that actually skip auto-scrolling parts of the yellow planet and the red planet. Um, you have character balance. You can't actually just run the entire game with Deadeye or Bucky. You actually have to 
diversify. You have to use all the characters at your disposal and the various power-ups, which make going through the stages actually quite fun. Um, you don't require anything like insane mashing to be competitive, and in almost all parts of the stages, uh, the level design is unique themselves, like it's not recycled in any way. You basically play a new stage every single time you progress. So at the very end of it, this run, literally, if you could remove those two RNG sections, and even with the two RNG sections, it becomes basically like a personal love letter to your own ability and skill and execution. And I think that's the greatest part about it. Like in my PB, I think I ended up going 17 minutes, 1740 I think, without my first death. And it is an amazing feeling to last that long without dying. So hopefully I continue to run it. Um, I, I know that I will. I'll, I'll put some serious time into it. And yeah, that's my reason for why. I truly hope you guys give Bucky a shot. I mean, the learning curve is insane, but once you get it down, it really is a fantastic run. Probably one of my favorite on the NES.